Hello all, today I'll be showing you how I made these borax crystal pendants. For this project you will need borax, this can be gotten at almost any department store or food store in the cleaning supply area, glass jars or containers, hot water, pipe cleaners, plastic wrap, a towel, some sort of string or twine, something to place across the top of the jar. I'm using popsicle sticks, but you could use skewers, pencils, or anything that can lay across the opening of your jar. I forgot to show them in the picture, but you will need a spoon or something to mix with and scissors. Optional items that you may want are either a tablespoon to measure with, food coloring, eye pins, as well as some sort of pliers and wire cutters. Here I'll show you how to make this little cross out of pipe cleaners. First you want to take a pipe cleaner and bend it in half. You're going to want to form a small loop at the top and twist down till about the length of the top of the cross that you'd want. Now fold out the ends. Now we're going to make this the cross section. So you want to bend it over and twist the length you want. Now you're going to do the same to the other side. Kind of eyeball it. If you want to use a, a ruler or something you can, but I just eyeball it. Now just twist down the cent center of the cross. Now this is the bottom part of the cross. I don't know why I'm messing with it so much. I keep moving it when I, it's my hand. Hmm. Just twist down until you got about the length you like for your cross and then fold up the ends. Now in the center of the cross, hold it down and twist the bottom part together. Now separate the pipe cleaners and put one on e either side of the cross section. And do the other side. Now the cross is practically finished. I'm going to add an eye pin. You don't have to, but I'll be adding an eye pin. Place it through the loop at the top. Fold it over. If you need to use a pair of pliers, go ahead. If not, you don't have to. But wrap around and coil the wire around. Now make sure when you're doing this, you want to leave a slight maybe at the most a quarter inch that way the crystals will have something to grow up and won't cover up your eye pin after you've coiled it you're going to want to cut off the excess and then I don't know why I don't have it in the camera, but you're going to want to bend over the edge that you just cut so it'll be around the wire so it doesn't get caught on anything. And finish twisting up the top of the cross so it doesn't flop around. And that's the cross. Here I'll show you how to make this teardrop. Get a pipe cleaner and fold it in half. Make a loop at the top and twist it. Now you're going to want to twist about all the way to the length of you want your teardrop. When you have your length, you're going to want to twist it around the bottom and wrap it up the length of your pipe cleaner that you twisted but you don't want to go all the way up to the top just part way and then you want to start going back down to the bottom because you want the bottom thicker than the top 
Now you're going to want to get another pipe cleaner, fold it in half, and line this loop up with the previous loop that you made first. Once it's lined up, you're going to want to start twisting it around from the top all the way down to the bottom. When you get to the bottom, you're just going to want to keep wrapping it around the bottom because you want the bottom fatter than the top. And there we go off camera again. Just kind of pinch it together and there's your teardrop. Add a head pin on it you want to go through both loops. Be sure to leave around a quarter inch gap and wrap it around to close the, the wire together and cut off the end. And then the part that you cut off, twist it around so it's not sticking out. And finish twisting the top so it doesn't flap around. And there's the teardrop. Next I'll show you how to make this heart. Fold a pipe cleaner in half. You're going to want to make a small loop and twist. Now on one side you're going to loop it around to make a circle about the size you want the upper heart and twist it. Now the other side you're going to want to do the same thing. Flip it around to make a circle kind of eyeball it to see if it's roughly around the same size and once you think it's okay twist it once to hold it in place. Kind of looks like a bow tie right now. So now you're going to want to twist the two together about this will be the length of the heart. Now fold up one side into the loop. Now this is your preference but basically you're going to want to attach it and fold it around because you don't want any holes so you're going to want to weave it in and out to try to get all the holes covered. It's starting to look like a little face at the moment. Like two eyeballs and a nose and half a mouth. So that's one side. Now you're going to do the same thing with the other side. You're going to want to go up and around, twist it around the little circle that we made previously, and you're going to want to start weaving it back and forth, filling up the gaps. You can try bending it to try to start seeing the shape of the heart, but we're not done yet. We have to get another pipe cleaner. Fold the pipe cleaner in half. Now you're going to want to stick it through both circles. And pull it through and twist it in the back to hold it into place. Now, you're going to want to weave this back and forth on one side. You want to try to get every single hole completely covered with the pipe cleaner on one side of the heart. Try to keep them tight and not too loose when you're weaving it. Because you want well, I kind of fell over when I was doing this. <laughs> there was a puppy dog pushing on me. 
So basically just start weaving it. You want to fill up all the little holes and gaps with the pipe cleaner. And if you hear anything in the background, I apologize. There's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> And then you just want to keep weaving back and forth, finishing off that side completely. Now we got one side done, so we got to do the same thing to the other side. Just weaving it back and forth, trying to completely close up all the gaps. There is no right or wrong way to do it. You just trying to fill a hole. Sometimes it might be a little stubborn, but you can do it. Oops. Now just shape it a little bit because it's pipe cleaners, it's wire, it could be shaped. So just start shaping it into your heart shape. The top that we first loop, bend it over downward. And now those two circles that are filled. So here's your little heart. Just shape it the way you feel like it looks like a heart to you. pin. Now that first initial loop that we made, put the head pin through it. Don't forget about the quarter inch. Wrap it and twist it around the wire and cut off the excess. And get the pliers and bend it around so it's not sticking out. This one I had little issues with it. It didn't want to work with me. It kept going everywhere but where I wanted it to. Alright. And there's the heart. After all your pipe cleaner creations are done, let's get them ready for the, the jar. Now you're going to want to cut a piece of string and tie it together and hook it onto your creations that you made. You want to hang them up. They need to drape within the jar where they don't touch the bottom or the sides. So it's going to be hanging freely without touching anything in the jar. Just to be sure I'm going to add my popsicle stick to make sure that it's not going to be touching. And if it is touching, shorten the string if you need to, or lengthen the string if it needs to be. Now the solution is one cup of hot water per three tablespoons of borax. And you want to keep stirring it together to melt it. You can add more. It, from what I've tested, it really doesn't matter. As long as you got enough borax for the water to mix together and you add food coloring and then the crystals will take on the color of the food coloring and the amount of food coloring you put in will also affect the shade now you want to make sure your cross well this is the cross one but make sure your pipe cleaner creation is in the center and you want to get a piece of saran wrap and cover the top this way the heat it will not cool off too fast, it'll cool off slower. Supposedly it has something to do with the chemical reaction for it to 
work out a little bit better. As and then I'm I went ahead and did six of them, so all of mine are already. I'm going to end up doing it after this. But then once you get them all done, you're going to want to take a towel and kind of weave it around just to kind of insulate it to hold the heat so it doesn't escape too fast. Now I did this outside mainly and I made a mess. And you can see borax cleans pretty good. Here's the part that's got clean on a dirty old table. Here's the parts that didn't get cleaned. So yeah, it worked kind of good. Here's the crystals after I pulled the pendants out. They formed all over the jar. If you break off all the crystals, then you can have little itty bitty ones you can use in other craft projects. Here are the finished pendants after eight hours soaking in the borax solution. The aqua cross, I didn't add much food coloring and it turned out lighter than the others that I added more color to. I also ended up putting that jar in the microwave for a couple minutes to help melt the borax which somehow made the crystals form larger on the cross. I got lazy and the other five I ended up heating up a pot of water on the stove and kept adding bor borax to the water until the borax no longer dissolved. Then separating the mixture into the different jars adding the food coloring. If you don't use food coloring, the crystals will form a clear whitish color, which in itself looks kind of cool. You may even use colored pipe cleaners instead of white pipe cleaners with uncolored borax solution, or with the colored pipe cleaners with colored solution. Just know that the crystals will always end up forming a semi-clear pastel color, so it might be hard to see the color of the crystal over a darker pipe cleaner. I've seen people stop here, but I have sensitive skin and having this touch my skin I didn't want any persp perspiration to react to the borax and absorb onto my skin, so I'll show you what I did. What you will need is some UV resin, I'm using Solares or some type of clear finish like polyacrylic, liquid leaf paint or craft paint, paint brushes may be a good idea to get some of those cheap throwaway kind. Optional glitter to add to the resin or finish. Jump rings and necklace of your choice if you do decide to do a necklace. Don't forget your pliers for opening and closing the jump rings. If you're using UV resin, you will need either a UV flashlight or UV nail lamp. Both will take three to five minutes to cure the UV resin. If you don't have either of those, you can place it in direct sunlight for 30 minutes and it will cure. Here's the aqua cross. You're going to want to choose what side you want to be the front and what side you want to be the back. Once you figure out what side you like the best, we're going to put we're going to paint it. I'm going to use this gold liquid leaf. You can use whatever you want or completely skip this. It's up to you. But I like the look where it kind of reminds you of like a um, geode and that's what I'm gonna which, that's the look I'm gonna go for you're gonna want to pick right in the center and go all the way around the cross you want to paint halfway up and finish all the way around the cross. And you can stop here if you want, but I'm gonna paint the back too. And then you're going to want to let that to dry. And the cross is all dried, ready to go. Um, I should say that the UV resin does react with this liquid leaf and it will make it run. So you got to be careful. I'll show you what it did later. Here's um, my UV resin. I just put it in this cup for easy use. I'm going to use a cheap watercolor brush that I got, kids brush I got from Walmart, a 30 pack for 88 cents. So it's not going to hurt me if I throw it away afterwards. You're going to want to cover the sides and the back with the resin first to get it just coat the whole thing. Once it's done coating, you're going to want to cure. 
cure completely. Now this mat fits in my UV lamp so I'm just using this to transport it back and forth. As you can see here the liquid leaf bled with the UV resin. You can see it kind of in different areas but it's okay it still looks okay. Here's some iridescent glitter that I'm going to end up adding to my UV resin. Not too much, just a little bit. You can kind of see it sparkling. I just want a slight hint of sparkle and not overkill. And you're going to want to paint the whole top part of the cross and cure it. Here's the heart. Now you're going to want to choose again which one you want is the front and which side you want is the back. And when you figured it out, then you can start painting. I'm going to be using the silver liquid leaf on this one. Now just like with the cross, you're going to want to paint halfway up the side with the silver. The same fashion as the cross. So you want to go all the way around with the silver leaf. And paint the back. And when you're done, you're going to want to let this dry. Here it is after it's dried. Now we're going to add the resin. You're going to put the resin halfway down the sides and then after you're done coating the sides you're going to want to do the whole back. Now don't forget that this UV resin does react with the um, liquid leaf and it will um, pick it up and could have some seepage happening with the silver on the front side. Let this cure when you're done. Here it's cured and it wasn't too bad of leakage to the front. So now I'm going to coat it with the glittered resin. And once that's done, we're going to cure it and this pendant will be finished. Here's the teardrop. I'm going to use the gold liquid leaf on this one. Now you're going to want to paint the top of it. Pretend it's a bead cap and you're going to add a bead cap to it with paint. Now how far you go down, that's up to you. Just use your better judgment on what you like. Here it is dried. Now I'm going to coat the top half in resin with the glittered resin. Now I don't know what happened to this video. The camera just, I just wouldn't focus at all. And I lost the second half of the video. So I apologized for you ahead of time on this. So just paint the top half of the piece in resin. Once the top half is done, let that cure and then flip it over and do the bottom half. And then you're going to want to let that cure as well. So now if you're going to turn your pendant into a necklace, Here's the cross pendant I'll use as an example. 
you're going to want jump rings and you're going to want a necklace or a chain or something to hang it off of. So you're going to want to open up the jump ring. I use two pliers and I go side to side or back to front and I don't open I open I don't know how to explain it <laughs> it looks like an S when you open it you string on the pendant and then making sure your chain is in the correct way direction add on the chain so if you're right-handed or left-handed you want to be mindful of how you're going to thread your chain on and close it up and you're going to want to make each one the same way and here's all the finished pendants that I did um, the red one the eye pin busted on it so I just wrapped some wire around it and it works just fine and I think they all turned out pretty cool and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have fun making your own little borax creations have a good day